Welcome back to the Virgo channel. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Laura and I'm going to do a general message for Virgo. Know that energy is fluid. Roles could be reversed. Just interpret the message as it best resonates with you. Also be aware that I like to go deep within my reading. So we will also be looking at the shadows and seeing how they play out as karmic themes along with your spiritual blocks, your person's spiritual blocks and all that good stuff. Um, it's not really good a lot of times. Um, that's why we're going to be looking at it <laughs> because we are going to see how we can transform our energy so that either we can shape shift the situation or whether or not we can just raise our vibration and connect to someone else. You know, a lot of times, uh, when you're connected to somebody and it's like you like them, but they don't raise their vibration, it's really frustrating because you don't want to be in a relationship where you have to lower your vibration because that's abusive. That means that you would, you know, be undervaluing yourself and you wouldn't be able to manifest the life and the life experiences that you want to have. That would actually display that you don't love yourself. And there's many insecure people that you can have a connection to, but they just cannot raise their vibration. And we want to go in and we want to save them. We want to help them on an emotional level. I feel like you were someone that would be the first person that ran in to like help people. And I don't feel like that's you anymore. I feel like you're seeing how you've changed and you've changed because I feel like people have hurt you. And the, so I don't know what the energy is going to be here, but I'm feeling like you said, um, you're connected to someone that does have feelings for you. I just feel like they're not, they're like, they just don't know how to raise their, their vibration. And that means they don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to be emotionally intelligent. And so a person that's not emotionally intelligent is they don't know that what they or what they feel themselves. And so they certainly don't know what you're feeling because they're not even good with their own feelings. A person that has learned to navigate their life through being very logical and analytical because of getting hurt emotionally come like it has these problems like they have an imbalance where they're like I don't know what to do I'm not good with people it's like when they're challenged if they're not challenged and they're comfortable they can actually come across arrogant and cocky and that's the thing so I feel like you're like standing strong and like you're actually seeing this person let's see what the energy is why I just said that. Again, if you want to enter into a new free reading with me, you got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and write the word of the video in your comment bar. This is going to tell you what the word of the video is. It's always where um, Spirit tells me to start. It's the underlying energy that tells me why everyone's doing what they're doing. Anxiety and worry. And that's what I felt. I feel like someone is really overstimulated because they don't know how to fix the situation. And I just feel like they, it's not that they don't know how. I feel like a lot of it, this is the, they don't want to do what they have to do. And that means that they would have to be able to communicate. They'd have to be vulnerable. They'd have to compromise. They're, they'd have to give something. This person doesn't give anything. They want you to do all the work. And so in you doing all the work, they, you're not offering anything. So you're going to throw me this little breadcrumb so that I come and talk to you. So I assume, because this is this how this person operates, like so that you'll assume. And then, then I can figure it out as I go. And I never figure it out in, in a bare, fair and balanced way once I get what I want. It's like this person's a low, a, a low vibration. Again, then there's, I feel like you're triggering their abandonment issues. So let's see 
um, yeah, like it's just unaware, like they're unaware of, um, of, the, first of all, they're not being led by their intuition because if they were being led by their intuition, they would know what to do. This person is strategizing. They're trying to figure it out. And there's too many things that I feel like that block them with their ego. It's like, well, if I come and apologize to you, then I seem weak. If I can't do that. Um, if I come to you, then you're going to ask me what, where I was and what my plan is and, and what I'm working on. I can't do that because I don't really know what that is yet. And that's what I mean by low vibration. It's not so much, I want to come in there and be a player. However, from being at a low vibration like that is very easy for them to, again, once they're in the relationship and the relationship goes south, because this is a way that they operate, it wouldn't surprise me if they had, you know, I oh I met somebody else because it's like very to protect their ego because this person it doesn't want to like surrender their ego right now they're holding back. Yeah, like and the thing is, and they gave a lot of a lot to other people, and so in they just gave a lot to you know this person like was. Anybody but you. Anybody but you. But really, it's because they have feelings for you and they feel inadequate. So it's like people that need healing, they project. And they project their insecurities onto everyone. And so if they have anxiety because they feel inadequate and feel like you're not going to like them because they feel that you're going to view them the way that they view themselves. Well, then it's like, I'm going to try and make you feel insecure and I'm not going to give anything. It's like it seems where it's like this person needed attention from so many different people. It's like they need attention. They need, um, they wear masks to make people perceive that they're a certain way. I feel as if the reason why this, what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a person that has a lot of trauma and the trauma plays out as that they feel inadequate. They feel as if they, they don't fit in anywhere. They feel as if that there's something wrong with them. So what they normally do is they overgive to people. However, the feelings that they have for you, you know, triggered them. And so it's like, they don't really want to be vulnerable. So they want to come across as a player. They feel like that's a better persona. And so they need a lot of attention from other people to make themselves feel good about themselves. So that's where they were when they met you. That's, um, and I'm still talking like that as if they're, they're, if they're still doing it, but I feel like that's what they, they were doing. I don't really feel like they're doing it anymore because I feel like you didn't not allowing it. Yeah, like and always felt like um like this person like just always like heard things like it felt like you tried to treat them like a child. Feel like where it's I don't really feel like you tried to treat them like a child. I feel like if a person doesn't treat you well and they're not giving you the time, and they're not respecting you, you're going to say something, you're going to react. And because of that, this is like, again, more projection. Like I felt treated like a child when you scold me and you lash out at me and where it's like, I don't really believe that you do that. I believe that this person looks at your reaction 
to their action. And again, it's a constant projecting and never looking at what they do. And just like abuse, like you felt like this person was ab abusive. I had enough of the abusive treatment. I mean, you, you will no longer hurt me again. And that's like you detached from this person. That's why they have a lot of anxiety. It's like they pushed it to the point of no return. I feel like this person thought that it was a game. I feel like it was like, um, let me one up you. It was, um, it, it was, it was abuse. It was emotional abuse. It was psychological abuse. And in part of it is they're not aware, but I feel like it's a, a lot is because I don't feel good about myself. I don't feel good. So I'm going to project my shit onto you. Again, consume no emotional space available, intense and overwhelming. So it's again like this person just, I feel like if they were in your life, they wanted to consume you and they wanted to consume you by not really giving you anything, but kind of keeping you on the hook by creating a lot of drama. And by you holding on to them, it would have impacted your life. So you released them. And when you did, you released drama. That's what I feel like. It was like, there was a part of you that's like, I can't hold on to you because you don't give anything. Like you're not on the same vibration. You're not on the same vibration as me. And you're unwilling to raise your vibration because you don't see that it could be any other way. You're stuck in the logical analytical mind. This person needs spiritual healing. They don't feel good about themselves. So they're gonna, again, tr treat you bad. And it's like, because they've been burned before. And so they, again, tend to be with a lot of different people. They don't have emotional connections. And the thing in, in that, it's like when you're connected to this person, it's like you feel like you're drowning because they don't give anything. It's like, it's almost like they, they hold on to you, but they, they suffocate you because emotionally they weren't giving anything. They just were playing games, making you feel bad creating like triangles to like try and like antagonize you to get you to react. It's like, and I don't think that you reacted. Like I said, you didn't give them anything, which is why they are worried. That's why they have anxiety. And I feel like their way again was to drown you. Now they're drowning in their emotions because first of all, I don't think that they took this, connection very seriously because they were very imbalanced when you're running around with a lot of different people you know you're just running with your ego and it's very addictive behavior because you're just you're not having real connections you're having physical connections but you're not having any real connections and this is what built this person's ego up and it was more comfortable to live in that level of consciousness and so again here it is they do have a real connection to you it's like they don't want that it triggers their abandonment they're like i don't like if i'm if i'm monogamous and then i only give you my heart i have to be vulnerable and if i have to be vulnerable there's a good chance i can get hurt and why do i want to do that it's like when I can have both, even though I'm not going to look in the fact that you're going to feel lonely. And if you don't feel good about yourself, which again, a lot of times people get stuck in this person's little games because many people don't want to be with someone that has many flames, you know, and so they lie 
and manipulate a lot of times to get what they want. And with people that are not confident, it triggers their place to be perfect. When meanwhile, this person wants to be seen as perfect. They have a big ego. Really, they're just full of anger and resentment. And that's why they want to trigger jealousy with inside of you because they don't feel good about themselves. They have shame. So they just wanted to act like, mm, I don't really care about this relationship, trying to create some sort of hostility with inside of you because of, I'm not going to give you anything. And eventually knowing that you would be in, intolerant due to their stubbornness, but hoping that you would again blame them and create like a, you know, a ruckus because you were fearful of losing them. But what happened is, is like you detached and that's not what happened. It's like, that's a game that normally they play with other people because they never have one person. They have a bunch of people and those people fight over this person and make a big deal and want to spit up like monogamous, mono, like in, monopolize their time, you know? And so they always seem like they're really busy and they're so important, again, to, to inflate their ego. And, but what happened is now that you detached, now they're like obsessing over the situation because again, you triggered their ego. Like you showed them that I'm not going to play this game. I'm not doing whatever this is that you're doing. I'm not doing it. I'm not playing. Because, you know, it's just too difficult to like, it's like, it's like it keeps me stuck. And really there's a part of you also that, I mean, that's part of them that, that wants this connection because again, their ego, but they're also like, this is hard. And it's hard because you won't lower your vibration. So even though there's a spiritual connection, it's a lot of it is a physical connection. It's where karma, karma is where I feel like this person is gonna learn, but I feel like they're gonna learn to do the right thing after you're out of their life and partially because you leave their life you're like i'm not i didn't tolerate this because this person said they want the relationship back now but again i feel like part of that is because of their ego i have toxic people and i think and situations in my life so and it and they and they are too weak to fight these these toxic things in their life. And it's like they they literally have toxic people and situations in their life. So it's again where they're like, no one can keep us in anything toxic. It's again the toxic traits be, that this person likes to play with multiple people creates attachments and those attachments obviously create toxic like karmic experiences because no one likes to be toyed with no one wants to so really this person's living like karmic a karmic situation they're in like they're they're continually like racking up karmic debt so the truth of the matter is, is that they have those people in their, their life, but they come around and they give you breadcrumbs kind of still to like lure you in with these toxic people around to now to fight their battles or to try because it's like, well, maybe you can help me get away from these people. It's like you, you had many flames, you created this. You create these crazy ass situations and you want to pull me in because I look wholesome. I look, I look, I'm full of light. I have like, of course you see like what I am now compared to like the people that you hang out with, but 
instead of you rising up, you're trying to lure me in because and no one keeps them. They're too weak. They're too weak. They don't they haven't done the weak, the work to uh heal themselves because anyone can get themselves out. It's a choice. It's a choice to be monogamous. It's a choice to not do alcohol and drugs where I feel like this person does those those things too because they don't feel good about themselves. They feel out of tune with the world. They're an outcast. And because they feel like they're an outcast, this is what they do. Their, their ego is running the show. And it's like, and they it came across you. It's like, yeah, I like you. I'm going to be with you too. It's like, oh, I don't really care what, you know, your situation is, what you want. I only care about myself. And it's like that you detached. You didn't play this game. You were like, not today, Satan, not today. And this person is like, like upset. Like that's, that's what's scary. It's like, they're like, oh, the love of my life, like what left, that's the energy there. But it's like, you're delusional. You're delusional because you didn't give me enough time. You're delusional because you didn't treat me right. And so, and, and you have all this shit going on over there that you're going to sit there and pretend that you don't know. It. And that person is very selfish and they're not aware. And so we have to ask ourselves, why do we do attract a person like this into your life? What is spirit trying to tell you? Because we attract people that come into our life to, to heal us. We get what we need, not necessarily what we want. I mean, sometimes we get what we want in a pretty package, but that's all that it is. The, once you open the package, it's like really ugly and not good because the person's so wounded and needs to do healing. So um, let's see what oppression being brought up in an environment that kept you down emotionally. That's what this person was trying to do. It's like, again, it, it's like a dominance. They, they, they want to control. And some people think that that's love, but that's not love. That's, again, this person's ego is running the show. They need healing. And until they do that healing, that ego is never, is never going to deflate abandonment now, these are your wounds oppressed and abandoned so we can say emotionally abandoned because when you needed to express yourself emotionally you know it was suppressed no one wanted to hear it it's like you're too sensitive like or it's not not important or it's again that's a way of like you know keeping you down and that's what this person is like would do the same thing. You'd be in a relationship with someone that didn't give because again, when they were around, they didn't give. And when you tried to express yourself, they certainly didn't listen. They played games instead. And suppression, oh my God, oppression and suppression. Like this is just like, you're not allowed to be like a person you are an extension of me. You are my property. You like, it's like real narcissistic energy. Narcissistic, narcissistic people can love, but this is the level. It's like, you'll have nothing. I mean, oppression. Like that's, I'm going to keep you down to oppression. I'm going to shut you up and abandonment and you if you were brought up by an abusive parent you know again emotionally just couldn't be there for you um because they had, they needed healing themselves people that feel the need to suppress and oppress and you know to have real flaws with inside of themselves because they're like i don't want to hear your opinion and I don't want to again be contradicted in any way I can't have anything that um 
that doesn't reflect my mask that I wear. And so, like I said, I feel like you didn't do it and that's not setting right with this person. So in a way it's like, oh, I, I really need you, but it's like, no, it's like this person you can't, you can't, you can't trust because like I said, they have toxic people around them. They're in toxic situations. It's like, they just want to treat you like property. It's like, and, um, and they're really imbalanced. So we ask spirit again, is there any other information, healing? What else should we incorporate into this situation? Because it's like, well, if your inner child wounds were that again, that you were brought up in that type of environment, it's like obviously um it means that you still and you attracted this person. It means that you still need to do inner work because this is this is like God brings me ideal situations for my inner healing. As I become aware of my weaknesses, I turn them into strengths. I direct my thoughts towards the light and see the positive side of every stage of my life. Darkness turns into co courage. Thus, I get stronger. So you were attracted this person into your life because you needed to still do the healing from when you grew up and you felt like, again, that you were abandoned and again suppressed and repressed and when you do your own healing it's not just to do the shadow work but it's to again create a new life to create a new life because right now spirit's saying you're still wounded from your inner child wounds you haven't created enough life yet and you might be like, what does that mean? I've dated a thousand people and spirit says exactly. But in dating, did you go out and explore the world? Did you go out and love love yourself? Like, did, did you have a love affair with yourself where you gave yourself new experiences, allowed yourself to meet new people, to go on different adventures, to just really find out who you are no you haven't you went from one relationship into another relationship or you've been in a relationship for 50 years and then it fell apart or 20 years or what however long it's like there was never that time and spirit saying that's why it's like again you need to still create your life heal fully heal so you can, I can attract, so you can, I, so you can become the vehicle that, you know, you want to attract in your life, you know, that you can, that you give me a vehicle, pretty much the spirit is saying, you give me something to work with. If you haven't healed, I can't, I can't, um, I can't just make the, that perfect person come into your life because first of all, you don't even know what that person, perfect person looks like because your experiences are like just imagined and you don't really know whether or not that is the type of relationship. A relationship that has to be tailored to your unique individuality. So you have to have common interests. There needs to be passion. There needs to be balance there needs to you know of the spiritual traits need to be also incorporated all right i know that you know so i'm going to leave it there and again if you want to enter into a learning a free reading don't forget to write that word in the comment bar and i'll talk to you guys soon bye